traveling to deep space, Jupiter, to find the ship of the damned, Sam Neill and Lawrence Fishburne, 1997's Event Horizon. Event Horizon might be one of the most underrated sci-fi horror flicks of the 90s and beyond. Sam Neill does a fabulous job. Lawrence Fishburne is always good as the heavy, tough, and, and competent captain of a ship. The Event Horizon was a ship built by humanity to travel not really faster than light, but vast distances in an instant through space folding type of technology. If you're a fan of Dune, then you know about this. In their drive, it's the spice that drives the space folding. You fold it together, you go through, and it expands. The event horizon flips the switch, disappears, and now years have gone by and is located drifting around Jupiter. And the Lewis and Clark, another ship, is sent with Sam Neill's character, Lawrence Fishburne in command, to see what has happened. Is anyone left alive after all this time? What went wrong and how can we salvage the ship? It is a great movie filled with interesting effects. The special effects don't necessarily hold up by today's standards, but the filming of the suspense, the delivery, the direction is ingenious. You really get the sense of horror accompanying with the sci-fi elements, and you get this stuff that you know, really wake you up and sit you forward in your chair, even in simple things like uh, Sam Neill's character flashbacking to his wife's suicide and seeing her dripping wet, now standing presumably corpse, open its black hollow eyes and say, I'm waiting. And the, <laughs> the way that the suspense builds and you're, you know something's happening, but you get there and you're like, and then you're there. And that really is the essence of the rest of the movie of how that flows. The horror elements are done in this way that are extraordinarily sometimes gory, but you get them in quick flashes, such as when they finally get to the ship, they get to the event horizon and they look at the records of what happened on the bridge, looking at the monitor, the recording, and the captain in this almost Star Trek sort of optimism is on the bridge. We're here about to do the first space fold and we're gonna throw that switch right now. And they throw the switch and all of a sudden blood and guts and dead bodies and sexual organs and all of this stuff streak across your screen. The nightmare, Hellraiser type nightmares of, of hooks and saws and other things. And it's just, it's done in this way that isn't lingering. It's quick, it's abrupt, it's intrusive and it is every bit as graphic and gory as they could make it. I had read an article about it. I guess they actually filmed it using extras who were like porn stars and stuff like that to get this sense of all of these naked bodies and this. Ultimately, though they don't give us a full explanation, what we gather from the voice they overhear muttering in Latin that the people in the other dimension think that they're in hell or they are in hell. And that's sort of what happened in this space fold. You travel through to an empty space. You, then you travel through to your new location. What is in the pocket dimension? What is in that emptiness? What is that essence of existing but non-existence? And what is waiting? And as it apparently turns out, it is a dimension of sheer terror, horror, pain, agony, fear, it is by definition hell. And so when they sw flip the switch, the poor crew of the Event Horizon ended up there and the ship has been floating around in this hell, seeing things, experiencing things, even as an object, absorbing what? Souls, spirits, intentions, who knows how to even define it, but it has returned and it's as if the ship then itself were alive as if the ship itself were something demonic. And of course, the Lewis and Clark gets destroyed during the reclamation project, and they end up the survivors on the event horizon being forced to try to return home on this ship of the damned. It, had, it does a good job of giving us a consistent technology, a consistent sort of feel and ambiance and uniform. It does not feel like low budget sci-fi horror 
where they piecemeal together costumes and uniforms out of different productions over the years. You can go back to the 70s and you see the aluminum foil shiny looking costumes that turned up on at least 20 different shows and movies during the 70s. It does not have that feel. It feels in every way like a plausible science fiction universe, though it doesn't give us all the details of like universe building. It gives us enough that you know this is a real place in the near future, the not too distant future. It's a real world. It's people. There's a consistent government laws, rules, space exploration, ship, ship design, technology, uniformage, clothing. All of that stuff is consistent enough to be this great sci-fi universe. And yet the worst has happened. And it's worse than, uh, well, it's in that genre of like alien and aliens. But in many ways, it's, it's worse, though it's more vague and less, less specific. But I can't say enough good about it, really, as an enjoyable movie to watch. If you like scary movies that are based on suspense, like I said, there's gore in this, but it's not a lingering walking around a chop shop of body sort of gore. It's, it's quick, but it really drives home the point. And the real scary thing is the suspense, the buildup, the way that this stuff is dropped in your lap and delivered. It's done really well. Very entertaining. I'm always going to enjoy going back to watch it. If you haven't seen it, watch it. If you have, let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.